Hey dudes, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I will give you a quick overview on Oxygen 2 and the general functions. So firstly, when you've opened up Oxygen 2, you should probably open up a model, which you can see here. I've already opened up a mesh building from Armor 1, from the Armor 1 sample model, but it doesn't really matter which model you open up right now, because I will just cover the general basics of Oxygen 2 and the interface. So you have it opened up. Now you will check for all these boxes that they are about the same size as I have them here because yeah, in the standard settings all these boxes I think they are not very large and like tiny about like this. So yeah, for a better overview you make them bigger then you can drag them around here so and neatly arrange them for your preferences. And then you make sure that you go to f File Options and that this one, where is it? Start on four views is as on. So this means you have all the four views directly on startup. This might be a default setting on the tools, but I don't really remember. Well, once you've done that, you will go to Window and check that you have the resource library selected and the name properties and mass. So mass is later important for objects and tanks, vehicles and stuff for the geometry to work. So you need to enable it. It's in this small dialog right here. And the resource library is a pretty neat tool because you can directly select from here all the polygons that are assigned to a particular texture. So that's very handy. You can go to the current lot, to the current model, so you see all the textures and materials that are on the model itself. And you can directly check if something's missing. So you see there's some question marks right there. This is because the TGA files, they don't exist anymore. So what's done there is that the TGA files, they were converted to PAA and thus there's the question mark. But the model, it will still work like when I open a bulldozer, which is the graphical representation of the model. You can see all the textures and they still work because the TGA files, they were converted to PAA and Oxygen 2 doesn't care if they are in TGA or PAA because it will ultimately convert TGA to PAA which is very nice so you can save some time there you don't have to manually convert them from TGA to PAA you just have them in TG TGA and it converts them and when you update in texture it automatically detects, Bulldozer so automatically detects that the texture was changed and it reconverts it to PAA. So that's a pretty cool feature. Well, and enough of this texture talk. Well, you, the resource library, as you have learned, is very handy because you can select parts of the textures. Then the next step, you have those named properties those name properties, they contain special properties for the engine. You probably won't need them right now, but you can read them up on the BI wiki. But mostly you would probably copy those properties from existing sample models. Then you have up right here the several lots. This one contains uh, first the first resolution rods, like you see first resolution, second resolution, and the next resolutions. So the model loses detail over distance, like you have the sixth resolution lot, which has obviously a lot less polygons than the first, so it's not so heavy on performance. They lose uh, very much detail, as you can see right here. So that's basically what BI is doing for the models to work performantly. And then you have some other lots, like shadow lots, of 
course there's also a less detailed shadow lot you have your geometry which tells the engine how much an object weight and so and also so you don't can uh, walk through it through the object and then you have the memory lot which tells the engine some important points. I will cover this in detail for other objects, but let's just say it, yeah, it is important for the engine to work. Then you have your roadway lot. This uh, is not so much of a road, but it tells the units and the engine where you can walk. Like if you build a bridge, you will probably have your roadway lot set up like this, so you can walk on the bridge. It's pretty simple. And then you have the path. The path a lot. It tells the AI where it can walk. Like you have in one, there they should walk in. Then there are the several positions. You've probably seen them on the editor. Like when you open up a waypoint on a building, you can select to which position the unit should go to. So these positions, they are defined by this several points. And for the path to work, you are best to use an existing sample model and take a look at how these paths are done. But I will cover building configuration in another tutorial in detail. Now that we are gone through with the path lot, there's still the view geometry lot. Well, the view geometry lot obviously tells the units where they can see through and where not. And then there's the fire geometry lot, which tells where you can shoot through and where not. So where where the bullets are stopped. And the view geometry lot, the fire geometry lot and the geometry lot, they all consist of several components. Like all of the single components, they have to be named. You can't just use a whole object, like in the resolution lot, and use it as a fire geometry lot because yeah, it will not work. You have to subdivide the whole model into several smaller objects. And all of those objects, they have to use sharp edges, which you can see on surfaces. They have to be sharp edges, and every component has to be named and yeah, it has to be distinguished. But I will cover this fire geometry law, geometry in detail in another tutorial and tell you guys how you create your own geometry, fire geometry and whatever lot. So this was like a first overview of the lots, the resource library and other settings. In the next video I will cover how you select different polygons and tell you about some of the modifiers of Oxygen 2. Then I will go into detail on unit modding, object modding and other stuff.